to protect consumers and for holding this hearing. On behalf of the National Consumers League, thank you for including the consumer perspective as you consider these important issues. Thank you. Uh, the question will begin with Senator Tester of Montana. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and the ranking member for holding this hearing, and I want to thank the panelists for their, for their testimony. I appreciate it very, very much. Um, I don't think anybody is immune from uh, consumer fraud. Um, I certainly have experienced it personally at a time when I was very young uh, and uh, could least afford it. Um, Montanans reach out to me literally daily about these problems. Uh, constituents have uh, paid for services online and that they never receive or uh, bad actors overseas claiming that something uh, that really doesn't exist. And uh, luckily we were able to connect them with the FBI or other resources. But uh, these are tough times for people to go through. There's no doubt about it. When they have to call my office, um, it, it, um, it shows in, in what kind of, quite frankly, difficult times those really are and the desperation that they have. We, uh, we need to be proactive. Uh, and we all need to be on the same page. I think all the stakeholders need to bear some responsibility for what what goes on here. Um, uh, Mr. Benda, you mentioned bipartisan efforts uh, we've taken in the Senate Appropriations Committee to facilitate uh, public-private partnership to prevent fraud and, and supporting law enforcement to combat uh, these people that are probably the lowest forms of life on earth. So, Mr. Benda, are there additional tools that law enforcement could use right now that's, uh, that, that we should be looking at? Uh, thank you for the question, Senator. I think uh, information sharing is going to be the key to help defeat this. I think when you look at the lack of coordination that we've got on fighting fraud, whether it's the FBI, whether it's reporting to the FTC, whether it's reporting to regulators, um, whether it's reporting to the U.S. Secret Service, it's, it's fragmented. And so it's difficult to spot trends. It's difficult to spot where these people are targeting. It's difficult for banks to get ahead of it. And so I, I strongly recommend or strongly uh, appreciate the language that was in that appropriations report. We think coordination amongst both law enforcement and, and private entities is going to be key there. One of the things that has uh, always, uh, quite frankly, amazed me is when, um, when a credit card number is used somewhere else and, and the bank makes me aware of it very quickly. Um, I, I give an example, and I've given it before, uh, two hoverboards were bought in Cleveland, Ohio on my credit card. <laughs> and it takes two two hoverboards for me, so it made sense. And, uh, and the bank called me up immediately and said, have you been in Cleveland, Ohio? And they took care of it, and I, I appreciate that, and I want to pass that along because uh, w sometimes we go somewhere and make a charge and they'll call us up and say, are, you know, are you in Spokane, Washington? Is, is this really legal? So I appreciate that. Uh, S Senator um, Haggerty and I have a piece of legislation uh, with other folks on this committee, the Financial Exploitation, Preven uh, Exploitation Prevention Act, which would, which would help folks lose their retirement funds, money to scam. Look, as I see this from this perch, I think the people, and I'd like to get a comment on this actually, the people most vulnerable are, are young people and old people. Does that tend to be true, uh, Ms. Sanchez? Yes, sir. Um, you, you know, you generally think it's older Americans. They lose the most amount of money, the older Americans do, right. but the ones that are victimized the most are younger Americans. Okay, that's good to know. Well, with this bill that we have with Senator Haggerty, it, it, it it looks to prevent fraudulent activity because um, because it's increased over years, um, and so um, uh, and it, it allows the the the, um, the account holder, to, the the company to, to to delay payments if they think fraud is going on. Mr. Benda, um, I think I think it's a really good bill, not just because I'm carrying it and Haggerty's carrying it, but but I think I think it could help. Wouldn't absolutely solve all the problems. Uh, but I think it could help. Would there be other actions you'd like to see be done uh, by this committee or other committees to help you do your job? Uh, you know, I, I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, Senator, but it, it really is the information sharing piece. And, and the okay. example I'd like to give is um, the sharing of the scam reported data that the telecoms receive. Uh, banks would like yeah. to analyze that data, look at that data, and then reach out and shut down those links and those phone numbers to so they don't work so consumers can't reach them. Right now, 
we don't necessarily get access to that data. So one of the things, and I, I'm going to just close out with this, one of the things that has me uh, worried is, is AI. You talked about customers and small businesses being scammed. And, and quite honestly, um, uh, AI is going to start playing in this. And hopefully we can use AI to, to our advantage on the other side to prevent it. But regular people, myself included, don't understand AI, period. And um, it's going to take a lot of working together to make sure that we don't end up in a worse situation we are right now. Because you can damn well bet the bad guys are going to use every method they can to try to rip people off of money because they don't even know how to get their hands dirty to make money in the first place. So thank you. Hey, Senator Tester, your experience notwithstanding Cleveland is a great place to live. I, it's a harder, I hear it's a harder rock and roll. <laughs> hey, and other things. I'll, I'll direct my first question to Senator Tester and the hoverboard. <laughs> <laughs> Having been on for seven seconds, sir, are you sure you didn't order either one of those hoverboards? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't know how to ride one of those doggone things if I had one, much less two at a time. Well, that's why you remain healthy. <laughs> those things are crazy. Anyways, thank you for the comic relief there, Senator Tester. We needed that. Yes, sir. As I've emphasized in my opening statement, financial fraud and bad actors are not new. Check fraud, for instance, has been around from my perspective forever since we've had checks, it seems like. And yet surprisingly, despite many of the technological advancements that we've seen uh, in the financial industry, check fraud 